Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. I'm your host, Ash Whitener, and this is episode 44, Running a Lemonade Stand from a Child's Perspective, with my guests, Jack One, Jack Two, Henry, and Owen, Lemonade Stand Entrepreneurs. This show is a little different. Instead of interviewing a successful entrepreneur who's actively building a business, I decided to interview four young boys who were running a lemonade stand on a hot summer day. They'd set up right outside of a coffee shop that I frequently visit and had a really neat lemonade stand with a wooden roof and everything. I was impressed. Once I saw that they were not only selling lemonade, but also their own artwork, as well as rocks. Yeah, just plain old rocks. I decided to take a closer look. While buying a cup of lemonade, the boys told me that they were donating 50% of all proceeds to a nonprofit that helps protect honeybees. They go on to tell me about the bee colony collapse disorder that's killing bee colonies around the country and how they wanted to save the bees. Very interesting, I thought. I went inside to drink coffee and get some work done, but kept an eye on the lemonade stand to see how it was doing. Customer after customer came by, bought their lemonade, bought their artwork, and even bought a rock or two. These little guys seemed to know exactly what they were doing. That's when I decided I had to interview them. Not only were they running a successful lemonade stand, but they were doing it for a good purpose. They were raising money to help fund a cause that they believed in. These boys were too young to think about how the government could save the bees, so they took matters in their own hands. Every happy customer made for more happy bees. You know, typically in the free market, we see win-win scenarios, which can be recognized by the double thank you. I cover this topic in episode 38, how to create a liberty-based community. Basically, when a voluntary transaction is finished, both people feel that they're better off, and they each say thank you. The Lemonade Stand boys took this a step further and decided to donate much of their profits to a cause that they believed in. This is really a great example of how entrepreneurship helps generate wealth, spread happiness, and helps people feel more in control. While you listen to this episode, think back to when you were a child, maybe seven or eight or nine years old. Did you have a lemonade stand? Maybe a car wash or a bake sale? Do you remember how exciting it was? Did you set the table and the chairs up for your lemonade stand? Maybe bake your favorite cookies with your mom in preparation to sell them? Did you have fun playing with the water hose when washing the next car in line? What was it that got you so excited? Did you feel a sense of freedom when earning some summer cash? Did you think what you would do with all that money? Maybe buy a new game or save up for a new bicycle? Did you feel, if only for a short time, a sense of independence? What about figuring out what you want to sell or how to make a sign to advertise that you are open for business? How different was it compared to sitting in school classes all day? Did you find neighborhood friends to help you plan and run your business or was it all on your own? How did it feel when you saw grown-ups smiling as they bought your ice-cold lemonade on that hot sunny day? Can you close your eyes and think back to that time? Can you remember the energy And what it felt like to get paid for your own hard work? Can you tap into that excitement now? Do you want to? The four young boys that I interviewed may not have a lot of wisdom to share, entrepreneurial experience for you to learn from, but their energy is strong and alive. Listen to the joy in their little voices as they talk about the bees and how their mom and dad helped them along the way. Parents are the main resource for children. And there's such a great opportunity to learn. If you're a parent, do you encourage your child to explore this creative energy of entrepreneurship and the responsibility and freedom that comes along with it? Leave your comments on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Liberty Entrepreneurs, and let me know. I really hope you enjoy this short podcast. It was one of the most difficult to conduct, but one of the most rewarding episodes yet. And please share this episode on Facebook and Twitter. It really helps the show. And it's such a unique perspective that I'd like to make it one of our top five interviews at all time. All that said, 
I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome back to a very special episode of Liberty Entrepreneurs. This is your host, Ash. I am here today with Jack 1, Jack 2, as well as Henry and Owen. How are you guys doing? Good. 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 All right. Come here, Owen. How are you doing, buddy? Good. All right. So we're out here selling lemonade in downtown Denver on 17th Street. What are you guys up to today? Why are you out here selling lemonade? Uh, we're selling lemonade to help raise the bees because uh, bees have been dying off. Since 2008 to 2010, we've lost over 10,000 beehives. Wow. And what's the cause of that? Do you know? Um, pesticides. Oh, so you guys are out here selling lemonade to raise money so you can donate it to charity to help save the bees. Is that right? Yes. All right. So tell me, you've got a nice looking bee shirt and bee pants. Did you make those yourself or did you have some help? Uh, I, the pants, I made them myself and the shirt, I had some help and the antenna, I, I made myself. All right. Well, the antenna looks really good. And I see the fast and focus here. This is jack number one, right? Mm-hmm. All right, Jack. Well, you know, one important thing of being an entrepreneur is being able to stay focused and be able to know what you're working on. You know, tell me about how you got ready and how you prepared to sell lemonade today. Well... Did you make this lemonade yourself or did you have some help? Or how, how about this nice fort you guys have here? Actually, my dad uh, made it, uh, the stand, and our mom uh, made the lemonade this morning oh wow how many lemons did it take uh 36 36 lemons yeah wow do you know how long it took her to make the lemonade um like an hour and a half well, that's really nice of her what what else is in here is it all made from scratch uh, yeah yeah what tell me about it um so my mom used like a little like puncher thing to like squeeze the juice out mm. and uh have you guys drank it? Do you think it's good lemonade? Yeah. Well, I know that I drank a small lemonade from you guys for 50 cents. It's amazing. I used to sell lemonade for 50 cents when I was your age. It doesn't seem like lemonade's gone up in price very much. Um, so how much money do you guys hope to make today that you can donate to the bees? Um, so 50% of it's going to go to the bees. We're hoping like 100 to 124 yeah. Yeah, that's really great. You know, whenever I was selling lemonade back in the 80s, I would say I, if I made $10, I was doing good. But we didn't have a nice restaurant to be out front of back then. It was just in our street. Um, so you guys don't only sell lemonade, do you? What else do you sell, Jack? We, we sell rocks and pictures. Okay. Are, is this artwork that you guys have made yourself? Yes. Yes. I made a few ships and one mountain picture that oh. I've already sold. You've already sold them. How much are you selling your artwork for? Uh, three bucks. Three bucks? Man, that looks good, guys. Did you all make artwork, or is it just yours? Uh, mine and Henry's. Henry, tell me about your artwork, man. What's your favorite thing to draw? I made a praying mantis and a penguin. Uh, the praying mantis is in front of the flower. And then the penguin is, like, diving in. The penguin's diving into the water? Mm -hmm. Is that your favorite animal, a penguin? Um, yes. Oh, let's, see, let's, let's see what Owen has to say down here. Owen, how are you doing, buddy? I'm the hippopotamus, and he, like, goes on the water, and then, like, came back on up the surface, and then he like, went back in the water, and then went on the surface again. Wow, the hippopotamus, huh? That, is that your favorite animal? That's great. Well, guys, tell me about the rocks here. I see you're selling rocks for a dollar, but what's really interesting as rocks for old people. Oh, I see it's been changed to senior citizens. I like old people better. Rocks for old people was 25 cents. That's a big discount, isn't it, fellas? And I think old people were 40 years or older. Why, why did you guys decide to discount the rocks, make them cheaper for older people? Um, because much older people don't has, have as much money. You know, back when they were growing up, I, there was something called a pet rock. Right? There, there, it was a fad. It was like very common back then for old people to have rocks like this, whereas you guys probably have video games and stuff. Before there were video games, people had pet rocks. Can you believe that? What would you do with a pet rock? Uh, I don't know. Maybe just put it in the bath all day to clean it. Maybe just carry it around with you and see where it goes. 
Well, fellas, um, if there's any words of advice you can give to other young boys and girls that are creating lemonade stands, what, what advice would you give them? Um, uh, to not use pesticides okay. um, and plant bee-friendly flowers. Plant-friendly flowers? How about you, Frank? What, what have you learned by running this lemonade stand? Um, How about the different sizes of cups here? Are you finding that you sell more small cups or large cups? Um, large. Large cups? Which do you think, which do you think is uh, better for the customer, the big cup or the small cup? Well, it depends. Like, if they're going a long distance, they might want a lot of... Uh, large cup if they want to if they're just not going as far they might want a small cup yeah, and have you guys ever had a lemonade stand before is this your first one so this was the first this is our first lemonade stand this is like our third or fourth time using it um our third, third. yeah third second um and we've had a whole lot of fun last time we didn't raise too much because it was on a saturday so you guys came out here on a Friday morning and afternoon, hopefully, to get some of the people walking and bicycling by. This is a good spot. You know, this place gets really crowded. It's got a nice porch out there, and a lot of people come by here on bicycles. I'm sure they're going to be thirsty. Yeah, we got at least, like, we got, like, $60. Six, six, and, like, 15 people. 50 people so far bought lemonade from you? How much money have you guys made so far? Do you know? No, but we made probably, like, yeah, 60 so far. Well, I'm really proud of you guys for coming out here. This is called entrepreneurship, right? Whenever you build a business and ultimately you guys are helping people that are thirsty, right? And you're helping quench their thirst. And in turn, when they pay you, they're helping you guys save the bees. So it's a very win-win opportunity, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope you make a lot of money today. And I'll let you guys know whenever I post this interview on my website, you've got my card right there. So take a look on my website and let me know what you think. Okay, fellas? Appreciate you guys coming on the show today. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to say uh, Define Dory. Find Dory? All right. Well, everybody, we're finding Dory. Thank you, fellas. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye, guys. And that's a wrap. A couple of elementary school boys out on a hot summer day trying to sell some lemonade to raise money to save the bees. It's really that simple. And they know they're making a difference. They ended up raising over $150 that day. 75 of that goes to the bees, and then the boys get to split the rest of it. Again, if you don't mind, please share this episode. I've never heard lemonade stand kids interviewed before. So let's get it out there. As always, thank you so much for listening and tune in again next week for another episode of Liberty Entrepreneurs. And until then, keep building freedom.